and you, it's verse 13. Everybody's heard that about uh, no temptation has taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, I'm going to preach this morning on the subject, overcoming temptation. Overcoming temptation. This is a study here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and I want you to look at it with me. I usually uh, read a couple of verses and just preach, but this morning I'm going to take a little time on the first point, uh, part and then just give you uh, uh, three, three little quick things, or four, okay? All right, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. You know what Paul told these people under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? He said, I don't want you to be ignorant. God don't want us to be ignorant. Now, it is not a sin to be ignorant, but it is a sin to stay ignorant, right? I know people that just brag about how ignorant they are. It's really not nothing to brag about. One old guy stood up and just said, I just keep getting ignoranter and ignoranter. That, that's not really much of a testimony. The Lord said, I don't want you <laughs> to be ignorant. Isn't that awful? That's, that's your testimony, how dumb you are. Uh, he said, I would not that you be ignorant. Now look what he said. This is, this is something else. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. This is the children of Israel in the wilderness. The church in the wilderness. The church in the sense that they were a called out assembly. Not the church, the body of Christ, but they were the church in the wilderness, the Bible said. And it said they were all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So stop there just a second. Now hold your finger. They all come out of Egypt. They all were under that cloud that, that led them, pillar of fire in the cloud. They were all baptized unto Moses. Moses was all, every one of them, he was their pastor. And the Bible said they all came out. They all, there was a big congregation, 1.5 million according to some, some scholar's estimate. And it said this, Mo, all of, Moses was their pastor. Look at verse three. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? Every one of them. What was that? The manna that fell in the wilderness. God gave every one of them eat the same spiritual food. And all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drink of that rock that followed them. Christ, when Moses hit that rock and the water came out and they drank and they eat, that was a picture of the, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of them had the same spiritual food. Every one of them had the same spiritual drink. They couldn't say, well, well I'm just not getting fed. You know, you know. They, they, they couldn't say, uh, well, they, they're, every one of them had the same pastor, Moses. There's only one church. He was a pastor that had a million and a half at least, and they all drank the same spiritual rock that followed him. Look at verse five. This is what blows your mind. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. The Lord wasn't pleased with many of them. And many meant every one of them but two for it was over with. <laughs> There's only two. <laughs> Lord, that's awful odds, isn't it? Good night, I hope we're doing better than that. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. The truth is, most of them people ate that spiritual meat, drunk that spiritual water, had the same pastor, had the same sermons, eat the same spiritual food, and died in the wilderness and never even got to go to the promised land. Isn't that something? Most, many of them, God was not well pleased. You know, sometimes it's discouraging me as a pastor. I think, Lord, have mercy, Lord. We're doing the best we can. I preach the Bible. We do that. And it just don't seem like people are getting. Then I, I read a story like this. Moses. Uh, have you ever said, you know, if we had old so-and-so for our pastor, I believe we could do better. Moses? You ain't gonna do better than Moses. You might do better than Brother Danny for sure, but you ain't gonna do better than Moses. And they still couldn't live right. Moses was their pastor. They had a cloud leading them by day, fire leading them by night. Manna drop out of the sky every morning, land on the ground to feed them. 
miracles everywhere they look, and they still no TV, no internet, and still couldn't live right. I used to tell some of them boys in our school, uh, they're marrying, them boys, they'd get in trouble. We'd go on youth, we'd make all kinds of rules. I mean, they, they'd find some way. And you know, I told some of them one, I said, you boys couldn't live right in heaven. <laughs> I got mad at them one time, told them out. I said, you guys couldn't live right if you was in heaven. You'll find some way to sin when you get up there, I guarantee it. And, and you know what? They all had the same spiritual food. They all done the, just like y'all. Y'all eat the same spiritual food. Everybody in here is getting the same food put on your plate right now while I'm preaching that book. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Are you one of them? Lord, I hope you're not. They didn't even make it into the promised land. Look here what he said. Let's read a little bit more. Now these things were our examples to the intent you should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Now in 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, he gives you five things that them people did that messed them up and killed them. And he said he wrote them in the Bible for our example so we wouldn't fall the same mess they got into. So if God takes these people thousands of years ago and puts them in the Bible and said, don't do these five things. We're going to look at them five things and make sure we don't do it. He said they're in there for our example. And, and that, that puts more responsibility on us than it did on them. They didn't have a Bible. Sodom had no Bible, none. And that's why the men of Sodom will rise up and condemn uh, the men of this generation because Sodom had no Bible. Now, if you know anything about the church at Corinth, Corinthians, you know that the church at Cor the Corinth was not the ideal, ideal church. They had all kinds of problems. They had doctrinal problems. They had moral problems. They, they could, I mean, they had uh, fleshly problems. They was immature. They was carnal. Uh, they were in sin. They, they couldn't get their doctrine straightened out. They had the misuse of the gifts of the Spirit. I mean, it was just a big mess. And, uh, and that fits the way many churches are today. They had people in there that were just sinners. Uh, you know what a sinner you know what a sinner looks like look at that person sitting right beside you that's what a sinner looks like there's your sinner right there uh, you want to see a, uh, uh, that's right amen uh, you want to see a mess look at that person beside you there's a mess Amen. And and then we and we got to understand this morning that God put these things in the Bible so that we wouldn't make the same mistake they were made. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's it's um, it's uh, uh, our job not to fall into temptation. So let's take just a few minutes and look at these things God told us to watch out for: overcoming temptation. Number one, the Bible said in verse six. He wrote them so that we would not lust after evil things like they did. So the first temptation they had was lusting after evil things. Now the word lust means to crave, to have a, a desire for. Normally, when, when people use the word lust, people normally think of just physical sexual lust, but that is not the only definition of that word. That is a very broad word. You can lust after a lot of things. You can lust after money and power and fame and for That's what people all over the world, people want power. People want money. Uh, the lust after money is unbelievable. That people who believe money will do anything will do anything for money. If, you, if money's your God, God, you're going to be disappointed. If you're if getting money is your goal, you'll be disappointed whether you reach your goal or don't reach your goal. We should not lust after evil things as they lusted. And and power, ladies and gentlemen, that's over in Numbers chapter 11 when they left Egypt. Now here's what happened. God delivered them out of Egypt. God brought them through the Red Sea. They were out there in the wilderness and they were out there. Here come manna down out of the sky. You could bake it. You could eat it. It was like bread that had a little honey taste to it and they could fix it all kinds of different ways. Next morning, go out, it was fresh again. And you know what they did? They start, some of them started looking back. 
and they started looking back and they got to complaining and they got to taking what God had did for them for granted and they got not appreciating what the Lord had done for them and where they brought them out of. Listen to me. They got to where they, they didn't really appreciate what God had done and is doing for them and you know what they done? They started looking back and lusting after evil things and some of them even said, you know what? I, I, I sort of missed them garlic and the leeks and the, and the stuff that we used. Remember that stuff we used to eat in, in Egypt? I sort of missed that. Uh, I, 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 they, they got, God made supernatural provision for these people and they looked back and said, I wish we was back there in Egypt. And I'll tell you something this morning. It's a sin for us to look back. You only translate it you want it, you want it so you can understand it? You're saved and you're doing, you start taking God's blessings for granted, start taking church for granted, your Bible for granted, and then one day you're in a store and you hear an old song that you used to love and listen to and drink to, and you think, Man, I miss that. I'd sort of like to go back. Now, the devil don't show you the heartache. The devil don't show you the tears that come with it. The devil don't show you how messed up you was. All he does is show you that little bit of fun that you used to have down by the creek bank or out the car lot wash, car lot wash, uh, car, uh, uh, or out, at, uh, out somewhere, and the devil will say, don't you kind of miss that? And you'll hear that old song. Or you'll, you'll see a movie we advertise and say, man, I'd sort of like to go back. I, I miss seeing the old boys. I seen so-and-so at Walmart and he told me they was getting together down at the club this weekend and I sort of miss that. Did you know that is a sin? It's an insult to God when we take for granted the grace that he's given us and the blessing. Listen, once you've had the blessings of God your name's in heaven. You're missing hell. Brother, it's, it's wrong for us to want to go back to that mess God brought us out of. You say, well, I sort of miss getting high. Well, get your heart right and thank God for what he's done for you. Be glad you're not out there drunk and high this morning. Glory to God, he's been good to us. It's a temptation to lust after evil things. Amen. That's right. I'd rather have manna and be free than eat the garlics of Egypt and be a slave. Amen. Egypt was once my home. I was a slave. Helpless and sin did roam. Love, light did crave. But when I looked up to heaven's throne, Christ came to say, I'm living in Canaan now. It's, it's always a temptation to forget how good God's been to you. We all go through that. I have to remind myself. Uh, 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 Kelly said something one day. I can't even remember what it was. Uh, she said, uh, you know, sometimes we start thinking, well, you know, uh, uh, you know, sometimes, I know she didn't say this, but sometimes uh, that old song on the radio, you want to get out them old CDs and uh, you should have thrown them away, but you didn't. Uh, you put them back in case you ever backslid. Uh, 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 or that, uh, that old magazine or that, uh, you'll get on that YouTube and you'll say, you know, I just sort of miss here and old, uh, old Leonard Skinner, you know, uh, once in a while, and uh, I, I sort of miss, uh, I sort of miss that once in a while, and everything, and, and you know, when you get like that, you know what you tell yourself? You tell yourself, say, look here, you little brat, talk to yourself. Have a talk to yourself. And brother, look here, you little brat. You're saved from hell. It ain't gonna kill you to give up an old, old lifestyle. That, you know, you, that's why you got saved, to get out of that mess. That's why you come to the Lord to get out of it. Don't want to go back. You want to go back. You say, I miss my old girlfriend. She's the same old skag she was when you had her. Amen, yeah, Brother Danny, preach it. God brought you out of that wicked relationship and for heaven's sake, don't want to go back. Number two, I'm gonna move quickly this morning. There's another temptation it said they had. Look at verse seven. Keep your Bibles open. Neither be ye idolaters, as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. They were idolaters, ladies and gentlemen. 
in Exodus 32, you know what they'd done? They come to Aaron when Moses was going up there to pray, and they said, uh, make us an idol like all the other days. We, we, wanna, we want something we can see, touch. We're tired of worshiping God we can't even see. I, I, want, I want to see it. Let's watch it. Let's touch it. So they put all their money together, and they brought their earrings and their gold and their diamonds and their wedding band watches and everything else, and they, and they put it all together, and he melted it, and out came this cat. And buddy, they put that golden calf up there. And uh, now I'm gonna tell you something about your idols. Your idols this morning, they cost a lot of money. They paid a lot of money for that idol. I said they paid a lot of money for that idol. I say one more time, they paid a lot of money for that idol. You know what people do when they have an idol? They'll pay a lot of money for it. They'll pay a lot of money for something. You know what that book said? You know, if all your money goes toward booze, if all your money goes toward drugs, if all your money goes toward partying, that is an idol. They put all their money into that idol. You know what that book said? Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Right, ladies and gentlemen, they, they had a molten calf. They worshiped that calf. Uh, that which is, controls your money is your idol. That which controls your emotions, that's your idol. That which you commit to is your idol. And brother, we worship idols in this country. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they had gods of metal. They, uh, they put all their precious metal together. Some people's idols are car. Some people's idols are job. Some people's idol is their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their bank account, uh, their career, their looks, their, their job, whatever. I'm telling you, brother, they had idols. They had idols. They wanted to dress. They had had idols and they went to their concerts. They went to their idols' concerts. They paid a lot of money to see their idols perform. They dressed like their idols. They got their hair done like their idols. They wore makeup like their idols. Uh, they got tattoos like their idols. They worshiped idols, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what does that mean? Here's the best way I can il illustrate it. Let's suppose. Your wife, all you men in here, or your husband, all you ladies in here, uh, was, was, was heavily involved with somebody else and they got, they got in, a, in a wicked relationship and you came along and they met you and everything and they left that person behind. They left that person behind, right? And then you, they fell in love with you and you said, I, I want you to be my wife, I want you to be my husband, and y'all got married. And after you had been married a couple of years, your wife decided she wanted to go back to that old boyfriend. With many of them, he was not well pleased. You know how it would hurt you if your wife went back to her old boyfriend? That's how God feels when you go watch a dirty movie. You're going back to that old, it's idolatry. Now, don't get quiet and don't bow your head. I'll tell y'all when it's time to pray. Now, you know I'm telling you the truth. We are the bride of Christ. We're, the, Bible, the Bible even said, if he'd been the friend of the world, his enemy of God, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know you not that the friendship of the world, don't look at me like I'm crazy. Don't look at me like, oh, Brother Danny, he's always preaching. Listen, that, have you read your Bible lately? The Bible said if we love this world, it's spiritual adultery. Amen. Just like your wife cheating on you. Just like your husband cheating on you. That's how God feels when we go give our allegiance to something that's not him. I'm telling you, they were idolaters, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm, ladies and gentlemen, you know all the words of the country song. You know them backwards and forwards. You know all the, some of you can about recite the Medea movies by heart. Some of you can just about uh, know some of, the, some of that stuff and you make idols out of stuff. Some of the stuff that ain't even wrong, like sports or, or food or anything. You can make an idol out of anything anything or anybody if you put it before the Lord and it makes God angry when we put something ahead of him. Amen. That's right, brother. You rearrange your schedule for, for sports. You know every sporting event. You know who makes something money, who traded who, who's in first place, second place, third place, Dodgers, Rams, Jets, football, baseball, basketball, and you couldn't find the book of Hezekiah. A few people laughed, the rest of you said, like, I know. There ain't no book of Hezekiah. 
Some of you was thinking, now do I know where that's at? You're, you're something else. I'll tell you what you are. You are something else. A grown American with a high school education and don't even know what books is in the Bible and what ain't. Amen? We neither let us be idolaters. Do you know the churches, a lot of the so-called churches have, do you know the Catholic church is full of idols, statues, worship? I'm not trying to be ugly. Did you know they have the hair of the Virgin Mary over in Naples and in Rome? The hair of the Virgin Mary? Do you know what would happen if you could find the hair of the Virgin Mary? Nothing. Do you know how much the hair of the Virgin Mary is worth? Not one thing. What you say? The hair of the Virgin Mary, that ain't gonna get you forgiven. Mary was a sinner just like me and you. Amen. You know what the Catholic Church has? They have somewhere over in Rome, the Lord's Jesus' footprint. His footprint, supposedly, that he left. They found the lance, the, the dagger that pierced the Lord's side, and they supposedly have that uh, in, in some place over in Rome or some place over there. They have John the Baptist, they have... Three legs, it's supposed to be John the Baptist. There's John the Baptist's leg. Over in Rome, there's his other leg. There's another. One. Somebody said uh, they took, a, took somebody in there and tour one of the big Catholic churches and they had a, had a skull in there and said, there's the skull of John the Baptist. Oh, how holy. And they went over here and said, uh, there's the head of John the Baptist. And, and, uh, and somebody said, well, I thought that was his head. And they said, oh, that was when he was a little boy. Uh, uh, but I, listen, I'm telling you, brother, listen, that's idol worship. We don't worship relics. We don't go in here, we don't get in here and say, oh, this is a piece of the cross right here. Let's all bow down to it. It's a piece of wood. It ain't worth a dime. If you had the original cross that Jesus died on, it would not be worth a penny. You say, that's blasphemy. No, it's not. The cross wasn't holy. The cross itself had no redeeming power. It was who died on that cross. Amen. The man on that cross, brother, is what we worship. Amen. You don't worship stuff you can see. And touch. People have a natural desire to want to touch their God, see their God, feel their God. No, no, we worship him that we cannot see. Ladies and gentlemen, here I don't worship. But let's look again. There's another, there's another one. Better look out here. Verse number eight. Let's look at verse eight. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. 23,000 people died in one day. Now it was 24,000 in the whole plague. That's why people say there's mistakes in the Bible. The one place it said 24,000, another place it said 23,000. Read your Bible. It said 24,000 died in the plague, 23,000 died in one day. So there's another thousand died the next day or the day before. You don't have no con uh, contradiction in the Bible. And the Bible said they committed fornication. Now, look up here now. Everybody give me your attention. The Bible said neither commit fornication. Fornication is sexual immorality. We have become numb to this. And our, it is common nowadays for people to commit all kinds of sexual sin. And uh, all all. Sex before marriage is wrong. Sex after marriage is wrong. If it ain't with the person you're married to. Scared you, didn't I? Oh my goodness. Uh, look here. Look here. Any sexual activity of not with a person you're not married to is a sin. It's a sin. Neither let us commit fornication. It'll get you killed. The Bible said they died 23,000 out of God's congregation in one day, right in the congregation of the Lord. I'm gonna tell you, lady, you better watch your kids. You better watch where they go, who they go with. Girls, girl, listen, diseases is eating up this country because of sexual immorality. I mean, 90% of the AIDS and everything would stop today if people went by that verse right there and said, neither let us commit fornication. Young ladies, listen to me this morning. Young men, listen to me. You do right, serve God. 
You wait till you're getting married. You say, well, that's so old-fashioned, Brother Danny. That's not even practical. You can't expect people to do that. God, I didn't write this. God did. He's not going to tell you to do something. It's not possible. Listen, if, you, if you're going to shack up, you need to get married or get away from each other. One of the two. You know what one girl said? One girl told me, she said, well, I, he just won't get married. Well, wonder why. You know why he won't get married? Why should he? He's footloose and fancy free. He gets all the privileges of a married man but don't have none of the responsibilities of a married man. No wonder he don't want to get married. Set your foot down. Tell it. Hey, you know the old saying, why about a cow? Running, we up in West Virginia, me and Brother Wayne went in a store, and uh, this sort of a loud, sort of a brashy acting girl was running the store, and and I knew, so when I went in the door, you could you could spot it just like that, and she was on there, hey, how are you? And this man looked like a construction worker was in there, and me and Brother Wayne, I was getting ready to, we'd buy some potato chips, and we standing there in line, and this guy's a construction, we said, bye, and she said, bye, and he leaned over like this, and I'm telling you, they went, I thought they was gonna kiss, I thought he was gonna kiss her, they were this close, and he said, I love you, and she said, I love you too, and he went out the door. So when I was next, I stood up there, I was up there, and I said, uh, here, ma'am, we're having revival down here, so we want to invite you. She said, oh, that sounds good. My husband's a preacher. I said, really? Was that him? She said, uh, no, that, that's just a good customer. I thought, a good customer? What are you selling? Uh, I, I'm a, listen, hey, now a mad woman ain't got no business acting like that. You say, oh, there's nothing, there's nothing going, oh, there's nothing. Yeah, you keep playing around like that and you'll be in sin before you realize it. Mad men and women ain't got no business flirting around like that. Mad men ain't got no business flirting around like that. And she just lights it off. I thought, well, whatever, you know, whatever. Pastor's wife, preacher's wife. And, and uh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, oh, oh Zig Ziglar, that famous, uh, he was a motivational speaker. And they asked him, you know, most businessmen go out to eat with their secretary. He said, he said, I don't go out to eat with my secretary. He said, there's five reasons. Number one, he said, I don't have nothing to say to my secretary that I can't say right here in our office. That makes good sense, don't it? I know people think I'm cold-fashioned and crazy. Number two, he said, if I took my secretary out to eat, I might like it. Number three, I might want to go again. Number four, people talk. And number five, I'm a married man. And I know how I'd feel if some other man took my wife out to eat. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and were killed. Pornography, you better leave that stuff alone. I'm telling you, you parents better, there is not. They say the average age of kids being introduced to pornography now, average is 11, 11. And by the time they're 13, they've had multiple exposures to pornography, and that stuff never gets out of a kid's head. And it perverts the way they see the opposite sex. Well, this, like that guy said one time, that guy used to when they had to drive in, and you know, all the cars parked in the drive in, they had them speakers. Some of y'all don't remember that. They used to have speakers you put in your window. When you go to the drive in, you turn it up, turn it down. <laughs> That's really old school, Larry. And we, we, I remember we'd done that when I was a kid, and we didn't, never did watch a movie. We just, we, one guy would drive, and there'd be about four boys hid in the trunk. And one person would pay. How many's ever done that? Raise your hand. Okay. Oh, yeah. We just done it to see if we could get away with it. We'd leave them boys in the trunk, and you'd hear them back there cussing, hitting us, kicking, hollering out of here. Whoa, 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 and, and, you know, I, I, was, I remember they said this guy one time, he come in there and he got on the microphone. He said, all right, you dirty, good for nothing, blankety, blank, blank. I know you're sitting out there with my wife. And I got a shotgun, I'm going to come out there and blow your brains out. And 43 cars left out of the parking lot. <laughs> Listen, that's the way it is. That's the way it is now. Amen. 
I'm telling you, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. Hurry, right quick, let me get this last one, or next to the last one. Number nine, neither let us tempt Christ oh, yeah. as some of them tempted and were destroyed of serpent. You know that story? Numbers chapter 21. Uh, they, yeah, what does that mean? Neither let us tempt Christ. What in the world is that? How do you tempt Christ, Brother Danny? Well, you know what the Lord said that time when they were, he said somebody was going to jump, the devil told him to jump off a big cliff, and he said, uh, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, doing foolish thing, is basically question God's directory and leadership of your life. You question his knowledge or ability to take care of you. Romans 8, 28 is in the Bible. Hey, they, they looked up and they said, uh, Pastor Moses, where are we gonna get water? We don't like this, we don't like that. I'm not saying this because I'm the preacher, I'm saying it because it's biblical. They begin to gripe against Moses. They fussed him in the You know what, some of you, you know you're backslid. I can tell some of y'all backslid. Uh, because I hear a little thing people say, well, why don't Brother Danny do this? And why don't Brother Danny do that? And I don't think he should do I think our church would be better if he would do this, if he would do that. You better watch that kind of attitude. Listen, I ain't perfect, and I don't, I don't think I do everything where I always right. I make a lot of mistakes. But I tell you one thing, if I sat sitting where you're sitting, I would honor my pastor. If I couldn't honor my pastor, I'd go find me one I could honor. They couldn't, they couldn't honor Moses, brother. Moses uh, stuck his rod out in the Red Sea party. They still found something wrong with him. Well, Moses, you got us into this, Beth. Well, oh, they loved him when everything was going good. They bought him a new camel every year. Soon as the new ones came out, new camel for Moses. And boy, I'm telling you, it had chrome hooves on it. And boy, I'm telling you, I mean, a sunroof going off. I'm, oh, they done it. But just as soon as something went wrong, Moses fought. Moses fought. He'd do this. He needs to do this. He needs to do that. They questioned who he married. He married the, that Ethiopian woman. They grapped about that. They fussed about that. It's easy to fuss about the preacher when you're backslid and don't want to do what God wants you to do. Amen, Amen brother Danny. Amen. That's right. For your information, the Lord never has run a church through a committee or through a board or through a group. God has always done his work through a man. Always. Check it out. Read your Bible. Number five, I'll say this now, hurriedly. Hurry, hurry. Hurry, Brother Danny. Uh, number 10. Look at verse number 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Lord, man, I don't know what happened to them. Zapped them out there. Now, all these things happened, for example. You know what they done? They murmured. You know, a lot of times we don't realize what a sin, griping, and complaining really is. We think it's nothing. We do it as a habit. God looks at that very seriously. How would you feel if your wife came in and said, God, I wish I hadn't have married you. You say, mine says that. Well, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> Lord, have mercy, how did I get into this mess? I wish I'd have, well, with many of them, God was not well pleased. With many of them, God was not well pleased. It's great. Can you imagine? No other nation had ever been blessed like that. No other nation had ever been touched like that. No other nation had ever seen what they seen, had what they had ever before. And they get out here in the wilderness and gripe on the way to the promised land, the, whole, the power of God leading them, feeding them every day, and gripe. Be careful and don't fall into a life of complaining. Don't do it. You say, well, our church, yeah, I know, I know. Don't you criticize this church around me. I don't want to hear it. We ain't perfect. I already know that. Now I'll say this and I'm through. Verse 13, how to overcome temptation. You being tempted by somebody at work? Are you tempted to go back to the bar? Are you tempted to go back do what you're not supposed to. Here's what it says. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. Remember this. You realize you're no different than nobody else. You're not the only one that ever had to go through this. You're not the only person that's ever gone through what you're going through. The devil's hit a thousand more with the very same thing. Don't think, oh my goodness, nobody's ever been tempted like this. I just don't know if I can. No, no, no. There's no temptation taken us but such as is common. Common to man. You say, well, oh my goodness, 
She's the prettiest woman at work. If it wasn't her, I believe I could stand it, Brother Danny, but I'm going to give in. I'm going to give in. She, they, I mean, it's, what an opportunity. No, it's common to man to go through that same temptation. You're not the first one, and you ain't going to be the last one to go through the same temptation to go back, to get high, to get drunk. Some of you, you're, you're tickled you to death when you get hurt because you get to take a bunch of pills. Really, I know people, oh boy, I'm hurt. Give me a Percocet. Give me a Percocet. You love being hurt. I heard about a guy that took a saw and sawed his hand so he could get pills. Now let me tell you something this morning. You ain't no different than nobody else. You're no, don't you give me this sob story about how pitiful you are, how you was raised, or how pitiful. You can't blame everything you ever do your whole life on something that happened a long time ago. And I can't either. You know why you sin? You want to. You choose to. It's your choice. Man up. Face it. Ain't no temptation taking you to such as common man. But God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. You say the temptation's strong. I just, uh-uh. Don't you say you can't. If you remember me saying this, the next time you're tempted... Before you sin, you look over here and the Lord will make a little way out. He always does. That's what he said. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. That's a promise. That's a promise. You say, well, I just fell into sin and I couldn't have it. No, 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 no. Here's the way it goes. You're tempted, you're tempted, you're tempted. And see if you can identify with this. There comes that one little split second where you debate. And you choose right then, I'm going to turn away or I'm going to look at it. Or I'm going to go there. Make a way to escape. Listen to me. You don't have to answer the phone. You don't have to send that text back. Delete them. You don't have to make that reservation at that motel. You don't have to hit that button. When something pops up on your phone or computer, I shouldn't look at it, and the Lord says you shouldn't look at that. Right there is your way of escape. Amen. That then, change it. Good. Change it. Good. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You'll regret it. You'll regret it. You'll regret it. You don't have to have that Swap, chat, nap, snaps, whatever it is. Snapchat, email, nosebook. Lady told me the other day she don't go to our church, so you don't know who I'm talking about. She's married. She sent me a text and said, Brother Danny, please pray for me. So-and-so's texting me. He don't go here either. And she said, he's trying to get me to come and see me. She's got a kids. She's got a husband. But when a woman gets maybe in her early 30s, late 20s, son, the devil starts working on them. A woman, you know, it's a dangerous time. When you're mid-20s to about 40, the devil starts really working on y'all. And she said, he's wanting to come over here and see me, and he tells me he loves me and, and all that. And she said, please, what should I do? And I said, delete his number. And I say, if you send me one more text, I'm going to show my husband. Well, how'd that from your husband? So if you send me one more, you say, my husband might go back. That's, that's better than ruining your life. Listen, if, that's, if he's so sorry, he'll try to get you to leave your family. He ain't worth fooling with. He ain't worth your time, girls. I don't care how many goosebumps you feel you, that, you, that you feel when you're, he's around or you're flattered. So what? So what? Ladies and gentlemen, don't answer that text. Say, so if you send me one more, I'm showing to my husband. You know, I don't want to be mean to you. You're supposed to be mean to the devil. That's right. You're supposed to be mean to the devil. Amen. 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 God is faithful. The truth is, you just got to make up your mind. There's always a way out. You know how to overcome temptation? Do what I said this morning. Look for the way out. And God's faithful. 
Let's stand. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed.